Dr. Rakhdu Dugama again. Today in this video, I'm going to review on 2000 A level, 2018 A level photoelectric effect question. I'm hoping to teach you the theory when I'm going through each and every sub part. Because I have seen most of the students, they more or less understood the theory. But when it comes to a question, they have a hard time to articulate what they have learned so that they can uh, answer the question correctly. Okay, so first of all, part A, question number one. So the question number one is asking about B. So this is the voltage supply. And uh, two main features of this voltage supply. So we have to understand this should be a DC power supply and it should be reversible. Now we will understand why it is reversible. You know, reversible means this. When you learn the material, you have gone through this you should be able to change the terminals. So then you can change the potential like this. Now, so how this works? Now, if you have this, your cathode would look like this, anode would look like this. So this is your cathode and anode. So this is plus and minus, right? Sorry, this is anode and cathode. Okay. So then you will have the beam, right? So this is plus and minus. Then in VI characteristic curve, you know that characteristic curve, VI characteristic curve, voltage and current, VI characteristic curve. If you have a system like this, right, you are considering this part of the curve. And once you flip the voltage, once you flip the voltage, this terminal becomes positive and this terminal becomes negative. You understand? We once we switch the terminals, you know, there we can find the stopping potential, stopping voltage, you say. Okay. So when you reverse the potential only, you can find the reversing potentials or stopping potential. So that stopping potential you can denote in a VI graph from this side, okay? So you know in theory, the stopping potential resides somewhere here, somewhere here, okay? So typically, this I current is in milliampers, typically. It doesn't really matter uh, for this uh, question, but typically, uh, it is measured in milliampers. Right. It depends on your intensity, but we will talk about the details later. Now, <clears throat> I would like to ask you this question. Why we call this photoelectric effect? Photoelectric. Why we say photoelectric this, for this uh, effect? Photoelectric effect. So this is because electricity Electricity due to photons. Photon electricity, photon electricity. That's why the photoelectric term came. So electricity due to photons. Electricity due to photons. So photon is a wave property. Electricity, you know, electrons, particles. So this is a good example for wave particle duality. Wave particle duality. What do you mean by wave particle duality? Wave can be a particle, particle can be a wave. Duality, you know, there is a duality. Now, um, what is photon? Okay, so what is photon? So in theory, you might have learned this, 
photon we call energy packets energy packets or you can say quanta you know the quantum physics right quantum physics is all about photons energies okay so for example if you get a light beam this is one ray so this ray consists of so many photons like this so many photons like this right suppose this is red light so that has frequency red right so energy of a photon is written as energy of a photon is given by h f red okay so energy of a photon is e h f red okay so this is the uh, theory part you have learned now what is h here what is h here h is called the planck constant h is called the planck constant okay and uh, there are two planck constant values we have to understand that okay remember the most common one would be 6.63 as far as i remember i think this is right joule second the second unit would be 4.14 10 to the power minus 15 electron volt seconds sometimes you get this sometimes you get this so we have to consciously look at the units because if you mistakenly use joule second uh, value so then uh, you are wrong right so you have to consciously look at the units and then you have to uh, use the right unit now you can see joule electron volts so joule and electron volts are the units for energy work done okay so now you can see that from there okay now before i proceed to part 2 i will give you a little bit of background so that um so that uh, you understand this question better now in a usual typical photoelectric effect question we have vi characteristic curve voltage versus current right i capital simple line if the plot is if plot looks like this okay so you understand this is this part this side co is corresponding to this part okay you can see when your potential when your dc voltage is in this way okay when it is reversed when it is reversed then you are talking about this part right where you have the cross so this part and remember there i told you when you reverse it then we are in interested in finding the stopping voltage what do you mean by stopping voltage at that particular voltage the electrons the kinetic energy of the electrons are going to be zero okay so this is called stopping voltage so you can see at stopping voltage your current is zero see at stopping voltage your current is zero okay so if you have the coordinate here it would be v as zero right so this is your y axis which is current it's going to be zero okay so now um we can move on now in this photoelectric effect experiment we are going to change three things okay first one we are going to reverse the voltage okay we are going to reverse the voltage so when we reverse the voltage okay we are looking at this this part and that part this side and this side okay so you you know what i'm saying then again we are going to change the intensity we are going to change the intensity in the intensity of light so when we change the intensity of light that means what that means number of light rays number of rays 
we are going to change the number of waves. Now we have to know, okay, this is important, we have to know, intensity is responsible for photoelectrons. Okay. Intensity is responsible for photoelectrons. That means current time, right? Photoelectrons current time. Third one, frequency. We are going to change frequency. Frequency means like in practice, you can consider different colors. Different colors. Okay. Red color and green color, blue color, they have different, different frequencies. For example, red color has red frequency, then blue color has frequency, a different frequency, but those frequencies are not equal to each other. Okay? So you know the, um, the spectra, electromagnetic spectra, right? In the visible range, you know how uh, there the, fre uh, the frequencies of red and blue are residing. Okay? So now, importantly, here, frequency f is responsible for is responsible for stopping the stopping stopping voltage. Okay. Furthermore, if I extend this in more practical way. First one. Now, I would say um, for simplicity, this is my A condition, right? So let me write it down here. This is my A condition. This is my beep condition. And this is my seep condition. So in A condition, I'm going to have, I'm going to reverse the voltage. So what I'm going to do uh, here, uh, I'm not going to change the intensity, right? So beep condition, I'm not going to change. But A condition is going to be changed. C condition is going to be changed, right? Now we will see how this characteristic curve looks like. If my A is going to be changed, so A is going to be changed from this end to that end. Okay, from this end to that end. So it's going to be changed. C is your stopping potential. Stopping potential, that means the frequency is going to be changed. So if the frequency is going to be changed, but the intensity is not going to be changed, right? So this is about in intensity. This is about frequency. Now you have to carefully look at this. This is capital I, this is simple I. Okay, simple I is for the photoelectrons or uh, uh, the current, photo current. I is for uh, the intensity. Now I'm going to change frequency, but not the intensity. So intensity is responsible for uh, current. So what I will have this, right? So it's a free, this is for stopping potential for blue current, for example, blue current, okay, blue current. Now, if it is red, okay, if it is red, should be in this side it should be on top of it why because current is not going to increase when it comes to the other side it should reside somewhere here okay so this is vs stopping potential for red now you have to understand why the red color is that way right so you are, you know frequency of red is less than frequency of blue right and you know, wavelength of red is greater than wavelength of blue. Okay. So I hope you know this. So now I changed it. Now what I'm going to do, my second condition, beep condition. Now, B condition, I'm going to change. That means intensity, I'm going to change. Eighth condition reversible, we are going to change. But C, 
which is responsible for frequency, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as a constant. Now let's look at your. Now let's look at your characteristic curve. Okay. Now it should look like this. This is Vs for blue color, right? So this is for intensity one. Intensity one for blue color. Then if I increase the intensity, what do you mean by intensity? Intensity means number of uh, number of rays. I'm going to increase the number of rays, which is coinciding with the uh, anode. So if I increase the intensity, so I2 is obviously greater than I1, that would be like this. Okay. So now from this picture, you understand frequency is responsible for, see, frequency is responsible for stopping potential. Intensity is responsible for current. See, when you are changing intensity, current is increasing. When you fix your frequency, nothing is happening here, right? So when you when you fix your intensity, nothing is happening for the photoelectrons. And when you are changing your frequency, the stopping potential is changing. Okay. I hope you understand that part very well. Now moving into um, the second uh, part of the question, right? So we are in a situation so that we can you know, go a little fast. Second question, name the part labeled as A and B. Okay. So A, you can say this is your cathode, okay? Or you can say this is your photocathode, okay? All are acceptable. Or you can say, what is else? What else? Or you can say, uh, you can say photosensitive metal. You can say photosensitive metal. Okay. So, nothing of this. Okay. So, B. What is B? So, B would be your emitter, right? Okay. B would be your emitter. So moving on, third question. Two monochromatic light beams, green, lambda G. Okay, so you have lambda G and you have lambda red. Okay. Colors with same intensities. You can you have to note this down. Same intensity. Same intensity. That will tell you same intensity means same photoelectrons. Okay. Same intensities measured in. Okay. Uh, allowed to incident okay so the details are given here okay now you have to draw a rough sketch to indicate the variation for iv characteristic for green and red okay so what i will do here now same intensities right same intensities what i will do here in vi characteristic curve this is simple i okay remember so now I would go with the red one. Red one looks like this. Okay, so you can say V is stopping potential red. Okay, so this is some current. Okay, so this is intensity I. Now the green one. Okay, so green one. So we are keep, we are going to keep the same intensity. So that means same photoelectron yeah, electricity. So but your stopping potential is going to change. So that would be somewhere here. Okay. So this is going to be stopping potential, but this is your green red. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Okay. So now moving into the second part. If the difference between the stopping potential is delta V and the difference between the frequencies is delta F for green and red colors, obtain this expression. Okay. So before I go into that question, I will revise theory a little bit. So please understand this. Now, if I'm going to incident a photon, which is E is equal to HF, energy of this photon is HF, then 
you know there will be a function some work done which is which we called work function right work function work function means amount of energy absorbed in the process of detaching the electron so electron is going to be detached right detached so then electron has its maximum kinetic energy okay so um in more practical way suppose the energy of this uh, photon would be 100 for example okay then to detach this electron suppose we have to uh, have uh, we have to have around 20 okay. then the rest of the energy is going to appear as kinetic energy which is 80 okay so now it makes sense 100 came in 20 wasted then 80 uh, is appearing as kinetic energy so now using energy conservation for this process using energy conservation using energy conservation one can write this 100 is equal to 80 plus uh, 80 plus 20 right so you can say e is equal to you can say phi okay phi plus e kinetic energy maximum okay so this is energy conservation now if you want you can write you can substitute for e which is hf right hf v plus e k maximum okay suppose this is your equation number a i hope you know these things but it's good to revise all the time now i'm going to perform another experiment where i'm going to heat another photon which you will have e0 energy f h f0 that means the frequency of this ray would be f0 as well as frequency of this ray would be f suppose this f0 frequency is less than f frequency right then what this f0 or e0 energy is doing this e0 is completely wasted as your uh, work function right so the detached electron does not have any kinetic energy is zero okay what do you mean by that okay what do you mean by that suppose this energy is 20 okay so 20 is needed to detach the electron then kinetic energy becomes zero okay again using energy conservation you can say e0 which is hf0 is equal to your work function so from this equation you get a substitution for work function okay you get a substitution for work function so from a and b from a and b you can say hf is equal to hf0 plus ek max okay so this is your seat equation okay this is your seat equation now there will be only one other important equation here okay we have to really understand that okay so you know stopping potential when you are talking about the reverse uh voltage experiment so that would be uh minus here and uh, sorry positive here oh, sorry it's minus it doesn't matter okay so when you are talking about um the stopping potential when the stopping potential is applied here vs what will happen the detached electron is not going to move to the other node right so this is going to be ek maximum right so ek maximum would be is equal to 0 right ek maximum would be is equal to 0 right now 
there is a one relation where this ek maximum ek maximum is equal to this is the electron right electron charge times ds total potential and that is your dp equation okay this is your dp equation so how do you get this equation you know in electric fields right you know like you know in electric fields you have a equation called w is equal to qv or some may can write w is equal to q times delta v this is called potential difference right so the work done is equal to charge times the potential difference so this time charge would be your electron the potential difference would be your stopping potential vs so the work done is that okay so from there you get this relation okay so now okay so now so this is the second part and uh, this second part i'm going to uh, discuss this in a, a different video okay so i'm going to finish the uh, first part today so um now we know these uh, equations now e is equal to e0 plus e, uh, ek maximum so this is sometimes people call v so this can be written as hf is equal to v plus this e times vs okay so these equations now we can relate with our knowledge right so now in the second part of the question right in the second part of the question what they are mentioning they are talking about red color and green color right so from this equation i'm going to subject evs so if i subject evs that would be hf minus v you understand this depends on the material okay so this depends on the material only depends on the material then for red color okay for red color you can say e vs but red here you have h f red minus v for green color you can say e v stopping potential green is equal to h f green minus v suppose this is your first equation and this is your second equation now if you minus these two equations right why because when you minus it you can get rid of these fees then you can see e e common so i'm going to take e out so when i take e out we get vs red minus vs green is equal to i can take h out then i i get f red frequency red minus frequency green okay so now you can see this is nothing but delta f frequency difference this is delta v stopping potential difference okay so now what we have to obtain in the question is delta f divided by delta v okay so now you can see you can cross multiply this so e divided by h is equal to delta f divided by delta v okay so this is the answer to that particular part so in my next video i'm hoping to discuss this question the part b okay so and i'm going to upload that very soon thank you